Putin's Nazi rhetoric reveals his terrifying war aims in Ukraine. Have we been listening to the wrong team? Or things not always what they seem? Hmm. Let's talk about it on the mic. Hello, good people. This is your guy, Mr. Educated, Mr. Communicated, Mr. Free Thinker, coming back at you live once again from the Lone Star State with another edition of the Media Mike Speaks. All right, good people. It is 26 minutes past the hour, and yes, we are the voice of the everyday citizen. All right, good people. This is what we do. We bring you the media, the right media, not the wrong media, but that's what we try to do. One of my subscribers uh, sent me some information. I did further research, and whoa. You'd be surprised to what I have found. So I want to jump right into this because this something here that um, got got me concerned. Like I always say, it's two sides to every story. Because if you checked out my first video I did about this, so now this could be somewhat of a semi-confirmation, allegedly. But let's continue. Russian President Vladimir Putin justifies his war on Ukraine as a peacekeeping mission, A, get this good people, denazification of the country. Now, I bear receipts in his address to the Russian people on February 24th, 2022, Putin said the purpose was to protect people who had been subjected to bullying and genocide for the last eight years. And for this, we will strive to demilitarize and Take out the Nazis of uh, Ukraine. That's what he's saying. I didn't know that there were Nazis in Ukraine. I didn't. It's just that I had to do my research. Or oh, there may be individuals who represent Nazism, I would say. A neo-Nazism, I don't know. But let's continue here. The victims of the genocide claimed by Putin are Russian speakers. The Nazis he, re he referenced are the elected representatives of the Ukrainian people. While Ukraine's new language laws have upset some minorities, let me repeat that, good people. While Ukraine's new language laws have upset some minorities, now I wonder who those minorities would be. Independent news media have uncovered no evidence of genocide against Russian speakers. So they say, okay. Now, in fact, as the historian Timothy Schneider says, he pointed out, Russian speakers have more freedom in Ukraine than they have in Russia where Putin's authority, authoritarian government routine, routine, routinely suppresses political dissent. And while far-right groups have been growing in Ukraine, their electoral, their electoral power is limited. You heard that, good people. And while far-right groups have been growing in Ukraine, those are the Nazi individuals, allegedly. But they don't have electoral power. Where if they keep growing like they do, Mr. Snyder, they just might get it. This is his words now. Now, as the author of a recently published book, this is Mr. Snyder, on anti-Jewish violence in Ukraine, and as he is a historian of the Holocaust, he quotes here, I know why the accusations of Nazism and genocide have renaissance in Ukraine. Or is there resonance? One of the two. But he knows. But if you know, sir, then it's something to it. But he goes on to say, but I also understand that despite episodic violence, Ukrainian history offers a model of tolerance and democratic government. But despite the violence, they put it right in our face, good people. Ukraine's Jewish leadership Ukraine's Jewish leadership. Okay. Because see, the president, you see, is a Jew. It's Jewish. It's Jewish. So what, sir? So what? History tells us that Hitler was himself part Jewish. So what's your point? But anyway, now let me give you a bit of backstory, good people. From some of my, uh, I would say my comrades here. This comes to us from the veterans today. You can check that out. 
Russian President Putin said his troops will fight the Nazis in Ukraine. Putin said his goal is to protect people who have been subjected to bullying and genocide, as I said before. Many Western TV reporters scoffed at the idea as nonsense. After all, how could a Jewish president of Ukraine, Vladimir Zelensky, allow Nazis to support the government? That's what I just said earlier. Uh, so what? Hitler would... Okay, let me continue. Now... Just in case you did or did not know good people, ever since 2015, the CIA has been running a training camp for Nazis in Ukraine to act as a military deterrent to Russia. The U.S. Congress passed a bill to fund the program, which is connected to the Pentagon. Remember that it was the CIA program in Afghanistan that funded Osama bin Laden and others following radical Islam to fight the Russians. That group later on went on to become Al-Qaeda, who allegedly, well, they say, attacked New York City on 9-11, which in turn created the U.S. war on Afghanistan and Iraq. This part has some truth to it, good people, people, because I am a post-911 war veteran. So, the CIA program Timber Sycamore trained and funded radical Islamic terrorists that Washington called freedom fighters in Syria until 2017 when President Trump cut the program off. The Nazi part of Hitler's Germany in WW2 was anti-Semitic, but the political ideology was fascist. The neo-Nazi groups in Ukraine are fascist, white supremacists, and anti-Russian. This allows the Ukrainian Nazis to partner with the Jewish president who is fighting Russia. Well, I'm going to continue, good people. This is something I think we need to know. When the pro-Russian president of Ukraine was ousted, it was Nazis who fought to create a new Ukraine. Devoid of Russian influence. One of the first directives of the new Ukraine was to discharge all soldiers in the Ukrainian army who was Russian. Suddenly, ethnic Russians in Ukraine were targeted as the enemy. Only the pure, pure Ukrainians deserve peace and prosperity in Ukraine. Those residents living in the far eastern regions on the border with Russia who were Russian and spoke Russian, were targeted by the Nazi groups. Fighting broke out in a civil war as the Russian speakers fought to defend themselves and their homes. This almost constant fighting in the Donbass region is the root cause of the current conflict between Ukraine and Russia. Had the central government of the Ukraine solved the issue of the Donbass before and ordered the removal of the various Nazi militias from the area, the current conflict might have been avoided. There is a second cause of the conflict, which is the refusal of Ukraine and its U.S. NATO partners to consider the national security issues facing Russia. After the NATO buildup in Eastern Europe brought NATO and its missiles pointing at Moscow, literally on the border of Russia. Ukraine is home to several nationalist paramilitary groups, such as the Azov movement and right sector, which exposes neo-Nazi ideology. As you see here in these videos, good people, and in these photos, I would say, I meant photos. I'm looking at the Ukrainian, the Ukraine flag in yellow they're carrying and the Finland flag with this purplish or blue look. Now, you be the judge, good people. I'm just speaking on the mic. Do your research, by all means. European far-right militia leaders have been busy on the internet over the past few days asking for funds, recruiting fighters, and planning for travel to the front lines in Ukraine to fight the Russians. Militia leaders in France, Finland, the Finland flag, the purplish or blue look, the Finland flag with the blue berets, who you see have their flag proudly on display in the photos that I've posted. You see the ones in blue? And Ukraine have urged their supporters to join the fight. According to the site Intelligence Group, look it up. A private organization that specializes in tracking extremist groups. Good people, a 2020 report from the West Point U.S. Military Academy's Combating Terrorism Center said U.S. based individuals have spoken or written about how the training available in Ukraine might assist them and others in their paramilitary style activities at home. A 2018 FBI affidavit said the Azov is believed to have participated in training and radicalization United States-based white supremacy organizations 
including members of the white supremacist rise above movement prosecuted for the Charlottesville Unite the Right rally. Washington has been assisting Nazis in Ukraine through Obama, Trump, and Biden administrations because they are seen as a threat to Russia. Allegedly, I would say here. In late 2021, only the United States and Ukraine. I'm wrapping it up, good people. I saved the best for last. Let me repeat. In late 2021, only the United States and Ukraine voted against a UN draft resolution combating glorification of Nazism, neo-Nazism, and other practices that contribute to fueling contemporary forms of racism. Both countries have consistently voted against this resolution every year since 2014, which coincides with the anti-Russian Nazi militias formed in Ukraine and supported by the U.S. I will go ahead and just say allegedly, but you can all look this up yourself. Let me know what you think, people. Subscribe, share, and like. Comment if you like to keep me rocking on the mic. Have a good night. They'll understand you soon. It won't be long. Keep on, keep on.